All right, guys, this should be a quick video just on ear embryology anatomy that's relevant to a lot of people, particularly plastic surgeons and ENT docs. So the ear is derived from these six mesenchymal proliferations, which are called hillocks. These are hillocks literally means just hill or protrusion or elevation. And these hillocks are derived from the first and second branchial arches, which are the way that they refer to in humans. They were originally discovered as pharyngeal arches in fish. So here's a representation of a human embryo developing. You can see that one, two, three, these are the hillocks that form the anterior part of the ear, which is here's the uh, fully developed ear, where you can see that the uh, tragus, then the root of the helix, and these corresponding part of the triangular fossa, which is here, we'll get more into that in a second. The anterior part of the ear is derived from these anteriorly positioned hillocks that are derived from the first branchial arch. The mandibular arch is another name because a lot of structures that contribute to the mandible and muscles of mastication, including the innervation, which is trigeminal nerve five, are all derived from this mandibular or first branchial arch. The cartilage associated with the first branchial arch is called Meckel's cartilage. This makes a lot of sense when you're looking at the innervation of the anterior part of the ear because it's derived from the auricular temporal nerve, which is a uh, branch of the trigeminal. It's V3. That makes sense embryologically, right? Remember, it's from the mandibular arch, which is the trigeminal nerve is associated with that uh, first branchial arch. And you look at the posterior aspect of the ear, which is four, five, and six hillocks, or the second branchial arch. This is the hyoid arch. This is a little different because it's associated with cranial nerve seven. And the innervation to the posterior aspect of the ear, if you split it down the middle looking here, is from the C2 and C3 uh, cervical branches, the great auricular nerve. And that's not exactly what we saw with the first branchial arch. The facial nerve that corresponds with the second branchial arch does not correspond with the innervation to the posterior aspect or the uh, more second half of the ear when you're looking in this diagram. Some of the important things to also know are the blood supply to the ear. The dominant blood supply to the ear is from the posterior auricular artery. You can see it's coming off the external carotid and the posterior auricular artery runs on the posterior aspect. That's why it's hollowed out and not colored in here. And it perforates and it sends these nice red perforating branches all the way throughout its course and on the posterior aspect of the ear. There's also some contributing branches from the anterior auricular and the, you'll see the external carotid will continue here as a superficial temporal. Some more things to note are that sometimes when you're trying to block someone's ear, you can block the great auricular very easily. You can block the auricular temporal very easily. But this part here that's the uh, innervated by the auricular branch of the vagus is sometimes very difficult to block because you have to literally go into this concha here and directly insert the needle uh, because this is innervated by uh, cranial nerve 10. So let's quickly look at some of the structures of the ear. This is important terminology to know whenever you're trying to talk to someone about whatever you see. So you see this is the tragus, and then across from the tragus is the antitragus. Obviously this is the earlobe where you get pierced. This is kind of looks like a bowl. Concha means uh, exactly what this is. It's like a shell or like bowl. Concha, simba, and cavum. And here's the antihelix, and then opposing the helix, uh, opposing the helix is the antihelix, just like opposing the tragus is the antitragus. Here's the scapha, here's the triangular fossa because it's self like a triangle. And here's the crus, or just legs of the helix. You can see the legs start here and run around. Similarly, here's the legs of the anti-helix, where the legs start here, and then they come down like this. All right, hopefully that was some important quick ear anatomy and embryology.